do subscribe to ekeda channel and press bell icon to get updates about latest engineering hsc and iit je main and advanced videos hello students in this video we will be discussing about the properties of magnetic lines of force what are the properties that we will discuss one by one so let us start with the property of lines of force hello students let us begin with the properties of magnetic lines of force with consider the magnet we have seen that if you take a bar magnet having north pole and south pole the lines of force will originate from the north pole that means outside the magnet it will be from north pole to south pole and inside the magnet it will be from south pole to north pole this is how the magnetic lines of force are formed around any magnet so first of all magnetic lines of force are complete loop Unlike in case of electric lines of force, they are not complete; they are incomplete. So here it is a complete loop. If you take a magnet, north pole, south pole, then from here the lines of force will originate and it will be from north pole to south pole outside. So outside, north pole to south pole, north pole to south pole, this way, like this, this way. Inside, south pole to north pole so this is how magnetic lines of forces are formed so it is its direction is from north pole to south pole outside and inside south pole to north pole this is how the magnetic lines of force are formed Let us draw. This is how the lines of force are drawn. The second point is that if you draw a tangent to any point on these lines of force, there will be so many lines of force, it's not one, it will be so many. So many lines of forces will come out from N and obviously it will enter from S. But then, so if we, I draw a tangent at any point on the lines of force, that tangent gives the direction of magnetic field. So the direction of magnetic field is given by drawing a tangent at any point. For example, here, if I draw a tangent like that, that gives you the direction of magnetic field. So tangent gives you magnetic field. Net magnetic field at that point. So net magnetic field or induction now next property is that no two 
planes of force will cross each other. That means lines of forces do not intersect with one another. For example, you cannot have these two lines of forces intersecting here because by that mean we'll have that at a same point. If I draw a tangent at this point for this line so forth I have a direction tangent like this. This is the direction of uh, magnetic field and for this curve if I draw a tangent here this will be the tangent. So at the same point it will have two directions because tangent gives you the direction of magnetic field and if they cross each other then at the same point we will have two directions of magnetic field which is not possible. Because at a given point, there is only one direction of magnetic field. So therefore, the lines of force will never intersect with each other. Next point. If the lines of forces are more crowded at a point, you can see here, if I draw few more lines over here, then it will be something like this. But if I draw and complete the diagram, the outside one will be more, these lines of force will have more spacing. The gap will be more. So if you can see here, if I take uh, a point here and if I take a point here, this point is crowded or uh, surrounded by frequent uh, lines of forces. The lines of forces are uh, more closer here and uh, lines of forces have more gap over here. If the lines of forces are crowded, obviously here it is more crowded. As you can see, it is more crowded here and less crowded there. So, where the lines of forces are more crowded, there the magnetic induction, the field strength, strength of the magnet is more. The magnetic field strength or magnetic intensity or I would say the magnetic induction will be more. And we have one more property, how to find the magnetic induction. The magnetic induction at any point in the magnetic field, you we draw a small area and we see that so many lines of forces are uh, actually passing through it. And uh, that area is suppose uh, A and the uh, lines of forces are passing that is total line of forces that is called flux. That is called flux that we will discuss afterwards. So the magnetic induction at a point in a magnetic field is the total number of magnetic lines of force passing through a given area perpendicular to the area and the total number of magnetic lines of force passing normally per unit area is called as per unit area is called as magnetic induction. So magnetic induction is
So if I consider point this, the total field uh, field line is passing normally to this area. If the area is not normal, you will take the component that we discussed in uh, standards, not here. So the magnetic induction is nothing but the, this one is called the magnetic induction. This is the total number of field lines passing uh, normally divided by the area that will give you the magnetic induction. This is uh, flux is a Weber, this is meter square. This is Weber per meter square. And this is called Tesla. So that is the unit of magnetic induction. So these are the properties. Thank you.